What's the most paranormal thing that's ever happened to you? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. My old friend from middle school had a pretty old house that was pretty nicely renovated, along with a really nice basement. My friend would always tell me stories about what would go on in the house, shadows would dash across the hallways, random chills, compressed chest feelings, footsteps and creepiest being floating toothbrushes. Saying that it was his grandma's house and that she still haunts the place. I brushed it off being there a few times before and never really seeing anything. We had a sleepover one night and slept in the basement where we had a blast playing video games all night long and just being kids. I was an early bird, so I woke up around 6 am and not wanting to disturb anyone I walked upstairs to just relax and just do my own thing. I was on the couch for a little while when I started hearing the plant to my right rustle quietly which I ignored until it was unbearable to listen to when I looked at it, it stopped moving. I looked back down at the book I was reading when it rustled again this time not stopping when I looked at it. I then heard creaking and the lights above the kitchen table started swinging back and forth, and the plant was still vigorously shaking. I decided f this and threw my book down and ran to the basement. When I started to run, there were another pair of footsteps sprinting right behind me. I ran downstairs where it sounds like the steps stopped at the top. My buddy was now awake asking why I was so loud, I told him what happened hoping to get it's probably just you scared or something. Instead he calmly explained, that's why I decided we should sleep in the basement. When my grandma was still living in this house, this basement wasn't here, so she has never came down here. I went there again a good amount of times due to the fact we were good friends, where I experienced whispering and chills. Nothing as intense as what I experienced then. He still lives with his parents there and tells me she's been getting more aggressive to the point the whole family experiences stuff, I'm thankful I saw her when she was more chill. When I was growing up, very young, my bed used to face the hallway out of my bedroom. At the end of this hallway was a bathroom. Every night down this hallway, figures would walk by, stop and wave, then walk directly into the bathroom. These figures were things that I knew but didn't know. Sometimes it would be Ernie from Sesame Street, other times it could be a black odd creature that I had never seen before. But they always would stop, look at me, then continue down the hall. Every night also, my mom would come and tuck me into bed. This was a clockwork routine you do to your kids. Bedtime story, kiss, tuck and goodnight etc. One night my mom didn't, and I remember calling her over and over again. Finally after calling her, she walks down the hall and into my room. I remember her coming in, she didn't read to me, but she apologized and tucked the sheets in around me. She kissed me goodnight and told me she loved me. When she left the room, she didn't go down the hallway towards the rest of the house. She went towards the bathroom and didn't come back out. I remember sitting there watching the hallway, and getting a sick feeling in my stomach. I waited a while then I called for her, I didn't get a response. I remember getting up and going to the hallway to see if she was there still. She wasn't, I was so freaked out, I ran down the other direction of the hallway to the rest of the house. All the lights were off and I remember running to her room. She was asleep in her bed, I went to sleep with her that night. And in the morning, I asked her if she came in and tucked me in. She told me she didn't, and that she was so tired she went to bed also. Another story, fast forward a few years, I'm probably around 8 to 9 at this point I think, but younger than 10. I remember my age because Hurricane Ike had just came through and we were ripping up our nasty carpet that had water damage. My bedroom has changed rooms, not that this information really matters. I'm at the end of the hallway, closer to the bathroom now. My bed no longer faces the door anymore. I haven't seen the figures in a very long time. For a little more context, the other end of the hallway leads to two rooms, our kitchen and formal dining room. The dining room was used as an office since it was more separate from the house. There is a big built-in credenza of a sort separating the kitchen from the dining room. It goes all the way to the ceiling, basically a wall I guess. Then both rooms connected to our living room. It was pretty open concept for being built in the 80s originally. Anyways, this one involves my mom and I again. Her and I are talking, and walking down the hallway. As we walk down the hallway, I'm not looking at her. I was looking at our feet as we walked. We were talking to each other, nothing out of normal. Then we reach the end of the hallway. My mom asks me, can you feed the dogs? And we continue walking out of the hallway and to the right, into the dining room which has a door to our porch. 
The porch is where we feed the dogs. I followed my mother's feet into the room that would be closest to the porch to feed the dogs after she asked me to feed the dogs. I'm still looking at her feet as we enter the dining room. We're now standing by the wall that separates the kitchen from the dining room, no longer walking. I don't remember what I said to her, I said something. But I remember hearing my mom's reply, from the kitchen. But I was looking at her feet, Bella me, in the dining room. What happened next was so quick it was over. I remember looking up at this figure, which happened to be a lady, she was dressed really well. I remember her wearing a vintage sort of hat, and a really pretty dress. I wish I had more details for her, but in the split second I looked at her, shoulder checked my vision towards the kitchen to look for my mom, then looked back, she was gone. My two best friends and I went to midnight premiere of Signs. That alone is why the three of us rarely tell people this incident. So as we are driving down a road we traveled a millions times in order to get to one of our homes, my friend's headlights light up what we suspected was a dog on the side of the road. My friend slowed down because he feared the dog might run out into the road. This gave us time to better make out the features. The creature was on all fours, had no tail or even fur, and was a solid charcoal color. But then when we were maybe 20 yards away, it turned its head and looked at us. It only had a pair of eyes and no mouth. When we reached about 10 yards away, it stood up, and walked into some bushes. I actually cried, I was so terrified by what we'd seen. What made it feel the most real though was that none of us said a single thing until we reached my friend's house. We were all so uncertain at what we'd seen, that we couldn't bring it up until my friend turned off his car and looked at me. We knew then that all three of us had seen the same thing. Never knew what it could be, but we're all damn near 40 and still don't really talk about it. When my cousin was a teen, late 80s, she remembers being in the car with her parents and her family dog. Suddenly she said the world seemed to go quiet, car noises faded, radio seemed muted, all except for her dog, who started losing it barking at something through the back window. She looks out the back window, and sees what she describes as a UFO behind them. She says the back seat of the car was suddenly flooded with a lot of green light and she spotted something flying above and behind them that was neither a plane or helicopter. She struggled to gauge whether it was large or small. Her parents are reacting to none of this, not the dog, the light, the craft. They seem completely oblivious. Suddenly the light goes, the dog settles, my cousin asks her parents what the heck that was, and they notice none of it and didn't believe her, thought she was trying to prank them. My aunt is dead now, but my uncle has been forced to accept that my cousin wasn't lying that day, just because she talks about it still and her story has never changed. I worked at a haunted pizza hut in Washington state in the mid 90s. I was a shift manager that liked to work what was called a dough or open shift. I'd get there early to make dough and do morning prep, then I'd open the store. I'd be done at 2 p.m. and have the rest of the day to myself. This pizza hut was in a parking lot complex, stores on the periphery of a large parking lot. My store was joined to a small teriyaki restaurant. A short walk away was a QFC where I'd go to get coffee after the dough was made but before I began prep. Every morning I worked, I'd hear the teriyaki restaurant also doing their prep work. I'd be making dough and putting them on a tall rolling rack that went into the dough proofer. After that the large rack would get rolled into the walk-in fridge. Now for those who have worked in pizza, or any restaurant that rolls racks around, you'll know what I'm saying when I say there is no mistaking this sound. There isn't anything that sounds like restaurant prep and rolling racks into a walk-in. So, one day about two years in, I was late leaving to get coffee. It was right before we opened, so I was hustling to get to QFC. I almost run into the lady that owns the store. She's late too, flustered, has her hands full, purse, drink and bank bags, and can't find her keys. I tell her I heard her prep person just a few minutes ago, but I bet if she tapped on the window they'd let her in. She had her hands full, so I did the tapping. She was staring at me, I go to the window and start tapping. Lights are all off, weird. I can see into the prep area and it is dark back there too. She says she should call the police. I'm like what? Why? No one preps anything in the morning, ever, they prep it close. Absolutely no one should be in the restaurant before about 15 minutes prior to open. She calls the police and they check out the restaurant. No one there, they take my statement. The noises continued until I quit working there a year later. I asked other employees if they also heard it and they all said yes. Even my manager heard it. 
A few have happened, but here's the most recent one. It happened a few months ago. So I have a pool table, this pool table is in the living room and at the time of this experience, I was in the kitchen down the hall. I'm eating dinner with my parents and we're talking and suddenly I hear the billiard balls move as if someone was playing pool. I'm not the only one who heard it, my dad heard it too. He abruptly stopped talking and looked at me and I looked at him. My mom didn't hear it, she was distracted. I had the deepest chills I've ever felt, swear. We go to look and there's no one in the living room. There's also no access to the living room without having to walk past the kitchen or walk in through the locked front door. I swear I heard the billiard balls hit. And I seriously swear even more because I'm not the only one who heard it. There's no explanation for why or how they moved. It's a flat table, it isn't slanted, and our air cannot move any of the balls on that table. It never has moved anything on that table. Other occurrences have happened in our house, but it isn't an old house at all. Some are freakier, others aren't so bad. The only explanation we could think of is that it could be our late relative. He suddenly passed away a few years ago and it was a very hard time in our lives. These occurrences didn't start happening until after his passing. Another occurrence, this happened sometime in 2019, maybe early early 2020, but I doubt it. My best friend was over and we were watching movies, talking crap, whatever, totally normal day. So in my room, there is an attached bathroom facing us. I tend to leave it partially closed but noticeably opened. So we're watching some random movie and she grabs the remote to pause it, turns to me, and tells me the door is more closed than it was a few minutes ago. What? Impossible. That has never happened before and I tell her that. I decide okay, let's watch this door for the next few minutes then, see if anything happens. To my damn surprise, I promise you I saw that door move closer to closing itself. I'm like, no way, I'm seeing things now, I'm crazy. And my best friend insists I'm not she saw it too. And while we're discussing it, the door slammed itself shut. We freak out, scream, run out of the room and then go back to stare at the door in amazement. Now I have to explain why I think this was paranormal. That door has 100% always had to be forced shut by anyone closing it. You can slam it as hard as you want and it will not shut until you push it closed. The AC has also never closed that door shut plus it wasn't even on. There was also no one else hiding in the bathroom. We were in my room all day and you have to walk past me to get to the bathroom, so this definitely wasn't a prank. To date, this is my most vivid and realist paranormal experience. My best friend also likes to joke around about never sleeping over, though my cousin means it, she really never will sleep over again. She always expects ghosts now whenever she visits. I was in high school during the launch of Halo 3. I was at my best friend's house eating a little Caesar's pizza, drinking game fuel, and playing through the campaign until our eyes lids got heavy. His house was haunted as I had experienced many unexplainable events over the course of several years. I would opt to sleep on his floor over the couch so the man wouldn't watch me from the kitchen. The man lived in the basement but could come up the stairs to the edge of the kitchen, that's another story though. The creak of a door opened my eyes. Laying flat on my back, I stared at the ceiling fan. It was just before dawn, but I'm unsure of the time. As cars drove past the house, light reflected off the window and traced across the room. My friend still asleep on his bed to my right. I turned my head to the left to see if his mom opened the door. She must have been checking on us, I thought to myself. Curious of the time, I sat up on my elbows to check the radio display. It's still early enough to get some more sleep. Another vehicle's lights danced across the room. I fixate on the closet door that is open approximately 4 to 6 inches. For some reason, I cannot stop staring into the darkness of the closet. A face, half cast in shadow, appears just below the knob. There were no definitive features and I was unable to determine if it was male or female. I did not feel fear, I felt calm. A hand met the face in a shushing motion. The door slowly closed. My stare was broken by my friend's voice. Hey man, are you okay? He asked. I turned to look at him and he said, there's tissues in the bathroom. Do you want me to grab them for you? Touching my upper lip, I realized my nose was bleeding. I explained to my friend what had happened and without really put any thought into it he said, yeah, you don't have to worry about that one. I'm pretty sure that's the one who keeps the man downstairs. The man downstairs. First I'll explain what my friend and I have come up with in an attempt to explain the man. My best friend's dad was a guitarist who had the skills to pay the bills. 
Unfortunately, in the true spirit of rock and roll, he battled with addiction. If I recall correctly he had been found dead on arrival twice in his recording studio, in the basement, and brought back by the power of modern medicine. When I met him, he was an extremely inquisitive, intelligent, witty, and generally pleasant person to be around. One thing led to another though and he eventually moved out and his parents separated. It was not a peaceful separation and there was a lot of negative energy the following year. That's when the man appeared. We think maybe the negative energy from dark metal and drug use combined with Oaks too caused something to manifest. My first encounter with a man. A few weeks after the separation, me and several of our friend group are in the living room hanging out. My friend is arguing with his mom about something, I don't remember, and she says she's done arguing. He persists and she finally screams, I am done arguing about this. A loud crash comes from the kitchen. Everyone in the living room, including my friend and his mom, goes silent and turns towards the kitchen. My friend says it was the man. His mom steps towards the kitchen to look in. She immediately turns around crying and goes to her room. Our friend group awkwardly leaves the house as I go to my friend who is now in the kitchen. He is kneeling by the refrigerator picking up pieces of glass. Approximately 8 feet past the fridge is a doorway that leads to the basement. Right beside the door sits a small dresser repurposed as a coffee nook. Atop the nook sits the coffee machine but the pot is missing. My friend begins to sweep up the smaller fragments of a now broken pot that lay shattered in front of the fridge. I'm there for him in silence. Mostly because I cannot think of a reasonable excuse for the pot to be in front of the fridge. He empties the contents into the trash can and says, don't think too much about it or you'll go insane. We have a half-winded laugh about it and return to the living room to hang out. So this happened about three and a half years ago. It was my daughter's sixth birthday. The kids were in bed and my boyfriend and I had just settled into bed to go to sleep. My eyes were closed ready to fall asleep and I saw a flash, through my closed eyes, a bit like a flash of a camera had gone off in the room. It was very brief but noticeable. I mentioned it to my boyfriend, who will refer to as T, just like oh, that was weird. The same hadn't happened to him, at least he didn't notice if it had. I forgot about it and tried to settle to sleep when a couple of minutes later, it happened again. This time T noticed as well. We both sat up in bed and then the light in the bedroom flashed. Again real quick like the flash of a camera. He got out of bed and turned the light on. Then stood by the window to look outside. He was convinced someone was flashing light into the house, messing around outside. There wasn't sight of anybody. A few seconds later, we heard a laugh from downstairs. It started as a laugh and turned into someone talking in tongue. The sounds had no meaning just babbling and gibberish. It didn't sound human to me. I can't really describe it better, just not human. It lasted for about 5 seconds. I completely freaked out and I looked at T. I'd never watched someone turn grey before, but that's what he did, like the color just drained out of his face in fright. After a couple of minutes, T went downstairs but found nothing, or no one unusual. We sat in bed with the light on for maybe an hour. T was trying to rationalize it. Convinced that someone was messing around and the voice came from outside the house or from a toy that my daughter had gotten for her birthday. That didn't explain the lights flashing though. I was, and still am, convinced that it was paranormal. The next day, I played the sounds on every toy in the house trying to match it to the sound I had heard the night before. Nothing sounded like it, haven't heard anything like it since. It took me a few nights to be able to sleep comfortably in the house again. I think about that night quite a lot. T is still adamant it's explainable, but I think something visited us. We don't live in that house anymore but nothing strange happened before or after that evening.